Hi, in today's video, we will be discussing what is thrombosis. I am Dr. Zubair Hassan. I am Associate Professor in Department of Pathology. What are our learning objectives? First is to describe etiopathogenesis of thrombosis, list the different fates of thrombus, describe the clinical features of thrombus. So, definition of thrombosis. In Greek, thrombos refers to lump. So, thrombosis is inappropriate activation of the normal hemostatic process, such as the formation of blood clot in an uninjured vasculature or thrombotic occlusion of a vessel in the setting of a relatively minimal vascular injury. So, there are two things here. First, there should be formation of a blood clot. But, blood clot normally is formed when there is vessel injury, right? Here, it is not the case. Here, the vessel is not injured. Secondly, or it may be very minimal vascular injury. Alright. Now, the solid mass which is formed in circulation from the constituents of flowing blood is called thrombus. Now, before seeing this video, please go back and see the videos of primary and secondary hemostasis which I had made to understand what is thrombosis. Now, clotting of blood after a cut wound is not thrombosis. Clotting of blood after death is not thrombosis. Clotting of blood in a test tube is not thrombosis. So, this is Verco's triad. Verco's triad is a short answer in the university exams. Verco's triad uh, comprises of three the factors predisposing to thrombosis. First being endothelial injury, hypercoagulability and abnormal blood flow. Let's look at Verco's triad in detail. First, endothelial injury. Damage to the endothelium disturbs the anticoagulant properties of the vessel wall and serves as the nidus for platelet aggregation and fibrin formation. The, there is exposure of the subendothelium extracellular matrix. This leads to adhesion of platelets and release of tissue factors which causes thrombus. Example is thrombus formation in cardiac chambers in myocardial infarction, over the ulcerated plaques in atherosclerotic arteries, at the site of trauma and inflammatory vascular injury. Second, alteration in normal blood flow. This is referred to as turbulence. When there is endothelial injury, such as in arterial and cardiac thrombosis, there are local areas of stasis, which initiate venous thrombi. In addition, there can be disruption of the lamina flow, which leads to movement of platelets from the center of flow to the near to the vessels, preventing dilution of activated clotting factors by flowing blood. Slowing down the inflow of clotting fat inhibitors, promoting endothelial cell activation. Examples are aneurysms and myocardial infarction in the region of non-contractile myocardium. Third, hypercoagulability of blood. This is defined as any alteration of the coagulation pathway that predisposes to thrombosis. It could be primary, genetic, secondary acquired. Now, in the genetic, we have factor 5 gene mutation, prothrombin gene mutation, antithrombin C3, protein C, protein S deficiency. In the secondary acquired causes, we have prolonged bed rest or immobilization, myocardial infarction, atrial fibrillation, tissue damage, following surgery, fracture burns, cancer, nephrotic syndrome, oral contraceptive pills, smoking, and obesity. What are the sites of thrombus? In the heart, favored sites are in the valves and endocarditis, in the chambers, in arrhythmias and myocardial infarction, in the arteries, they are seen in iota, coronary arteries, cerebral arteries, in the form of atherosclerosis and aneurysms, in the veins, we can have it in the lower limb veins, popliteal vein, femoral vein, iliac veins, post-operative varicosities, disseminated intravascular coagulation in the capillaries. Now, when there is a thrombus formation, the thrombus is adherent to the arterial wall and is seen here, including most of the uh, lumen. And what you can find here are lines of zan, composed of the platelets and the fibrin meshwork with entangled red cells and leukocytes. All right. So, the thrombus morphology, all right? 
It's comprised of variable shapes and sizes and its composition depends upon the site of origin. Arterial thrombi grow in a retrograde direction from the point of attachment. Venous thrombi extend into the direction of blood flow. Look at the thrombus here within the lumen. Thrombi, see the lines of Zahn are visible here. If you see here, this is a blood vessel which is open. This is a laminated thrombus in the dilated abdominal aneurysm. This is the iota. This is the aneurysm. The aneurysm is nothing but a dilatation of the blood vessel. And what you are finding here is the thrombus here. And you can appreciate the different colors here. Okay, These are the lines of Zahn. Lamination is seen. All right. Same thing can be seen as alternating pink bands of platelets with the red bands of fibrin in the microscopy. So, this is the fibrin. Yeah, yeah, you can know, find the platelets in here. What is a mural thrombi? Thrombi adherent to the wall of underlying structure, such as arterial thrombi arising in the heart chambers or in the aortic lumen. So, mural means adherent to the wall. It is being seen here. Okay, this is the mural thrombi. Morphology of venous thrombi. This is also called as venous thrombosis or phlebothrombosis. Veins of the lower extremity, 90%, upper extremity, periprostatic plexuses, ovarian and periuterine veins, dural sinuses, portal vein, hepatic vein. Usually they are occlusive. They form long cast of veins with markings on them with red stances thromb and red or stasis thrombi because they form in stasis syndromes. So, all right, so the prolonged immobilization, especially when we are traveling, we are advised to keep moving our legs in long journeys in aeroplanes. Otherwise, what will happen? The, there is a tendency for the veins to undergo thrombosis, leading to deep vein thrombosis. Now, we need to know from a forensic point of view, if you are having an autopsy, what is the difference between an anti-mortem thrombi and a post-mortem clot? Okay, this is especially important to establish the cause of death. So, an anti-mortem thrombi is dry, granular, firm, friable. Its surface contains lines of zahn. It is adherent to the vessel wall and may or may not fit to their vascular contours. Post-mortem clots, on the other hand, are gelatinous, soft, rubbery. Their surface have a chicken fat yellow appearance with an undercurrent, underlying red current jelly. Okay, red cells are settled here by gravity. They are weakly attached to the vessel wall and take the shape of the vessels or its bifurcation. All right. This is how you can make out a case of deep vein thrombosis. There are, compared to the normal limb, this is definitely enlarged. Okay, there is swelling over here and the veins are engorged. They will be, it's very painful condition. What you find here is the thrombus of the coronary arteries. All right. And here you can find within the vessel wall, there is a nice thrombus which is ruptured. Here, the main leg veins are filled with blood clot. Can you see here? The blood clots. So, now coming to the fate of a thrombus. This is itself a question. Uh, short answer it can be asked. What is the fate of a thrombus? A thrombus can propagate. Propagate means it can spread all along the path. Resolve, completely disappear. Embolize, dis gets dislodged and gets deposited in the lungs. Organizes means there is Organization means small channels will open, vascular channels will open into the thrombus. This is called the organization of a thrombus. So, same thing. Propagation, this is the, the fate of a venous thrombus. Thrombus enlarges by a more platelets and fibrin and eventually obstructs a vessel. It can resolve completely or disappear, embolize, travel from its site of origin to distal part, organize and recanalize. Alright, this is how organized thrombus looks. Can you appreciate here? This is the blood vessel and this is the thrombus and there are small minute channels here. Okay, these are the organization of a thrombus. Alright, again recanalized. You can see the blood vessel here, thrombus with small three channels here and multiple smaller channels. This is the recanalized thrombus. Arterial thrombi are usually occlusive, seen in the coronaries, cerebral and femoral arteries, superimposed on an atherosclerotic plaque or a vascular injury. They are firmly adherent to the wall. They are grey white and friable, composed of entangled mesh of platelet, fibrin, RBCs, and degenerating leukocytes. Fate of the arterial thrombi is also similar. All right. Now, clinical correlation. 
the thrombi are significant they cause obstruction of arteries and veins they are possible sources of emboli venous thrombosis can lead to superficial venous thrombi which is local congestion edema pain and tenderness along the course of the veins along the course of the vein you have pain and deep vein thrombosis all right this is seen in larger veins at or above the knee called thromboembolism you can have migratory thrombophlebitis or trogier syndrome seen in disseminated cancers okay tumors associated with procoagulant phenomenon with increased risk of thromboembolic phenomena you can have cardiac thrombi which large thrombi in the heart sudden death by mechanical obstruction of blood flow okay so cardiac thrombosis we know they can have sudden cardiac death and they can also be a thromboembolism to the vital organs of brain kidney spleen and arterial thrombosis you have to remember gangrene is a form of arterial thrombosis and there can be sudden death before because of thrombosis of the coronary artery so these are all the clinical implications of a thrombus okay remember this and these are the features distinguishing features between arterial thrombi and venous thrombi by the name itself we know that this originates from the artery and this flows from the vein and is involving the aorta coronary artery cerebral arteries this involves the varic superficial varicose veins deep veins of the leg popliteal femoral veins okay and arterial thrombi is formed following endothelial cell injury usually mural not occluding the lumen completely gray white friable with lines of zahn distinct lines of zahn composed of platelets fibrin with entangled red and white blood cells ischemia leads to infarcts whereas the venous thrombi as i said seen in the veins form following venous stasis in abdominal operations childbirth usually occlusive takes the cast of the vessel in which it is formed red blue with fibrin strands and with lines of zahn with more abundant rvcs the effects are thromboembolism edema skin ulcers and poor wound healing okay what are the five key concepts thrombosis first is inappropriate intravascular clotting of blood is called thrombosis damage to the endothelium slow flow and increased coagulability of blood predisposes to thrombosis third thrombus is composed of platelets fibrin and entrapped red cells fourth a thrombus may lyse organize propagate or embolize fifth embolization and occlusion of the arteries are serious complications thank you for your attention please like subscribe this channel okay thank you